Welcome back, everyone. The theme for our next keynote is unfortunately in the headlines of the daily newspapers and more frequently crossing our paths in different areas of our lives. I'm referring to cybersecurity. And to talk about it, we have someone that has been working on cybersecurity since it was just called security. He is responsible for detecting and responding to cybersecurity incidents at one of the largest academic publishers. Born and raised in Lisbon, he started his career as a systems administrator, but quickly discovered his passion for security. Before switching to security operations domain, he worked as a security engineer delivering security solutions to all types of companies. He is a people person who loves meeting new people and traveling. He is security operation lead at Springer Nature. He will talk to us about cybersecurity, and we will have a Q&A after his talk. Please let's hear a big round of applause for Angelo Igreja. Good morning, everyone. So today, um, I have a small talk to you about how the companies can actually reduce the risk of um, reducing the risk, of course. So basically, I'll speak about uh, global business risks. So according to a survey uh, by Alliance, by Alliance um, what are classified as the top priority business risks for the companies. Um, then what is incident response um, for the companies? What is my main objective is to speak to you about security operations, uh, is security orchestration, automation, and response. Uh, that's and then I save some time for questions in the, in the end. So basically, according to a survey performed by Alliance, cyber incidents are top one um, risk for companies. What, what does this mean? Is that no longer uh, any other kind of risks like business um, uh, interruptions, catastrophes, uh, pandemics, outbreaks, climate changes, all the other ones are classified by business as not the priority at this stage. So, um, <clears throat> and what is a cybersecurity incident? A security incident is uh, a set, an event or a set of events that can compromise information security by com compromising confidentiality, integrity, or availability. I have here a small diagram about how can we actually detect and um, generate or be able to identify incidents. So on the left, the telemetry source is how the companies can actually collect uh, what's going on on the company by collecting telemetry from security devices, endpoints, network traffic, uh, cloud infrastructure. So all these sources will feed into um, our uh, data lake or our SIEM solution in order to uh, run some analytics, analytics on top and this will trigger what we call um, incidents or alerts for um, someone to analyze after, uh, because the behavior was detected. There's also another source that can be threat intelligence, that it's basically the analysis of the adversary's capabilities. So we need to understand motivations, goals, um, and of course their objectives. So this can also generate an incident because if companies in sector similar to ours is also being targeted by other um, attackers, we will like to know and be able to protect against the, those kind of attacks as well. So that can also be a source of an incident for sure. Uh, there's threat hunting. Threat hunting is the proactive search for uh, an unde undetected breach. What this means? So on the left we have what can actually generate automatically incidents. So basically our analytics will investigate if there's some deviation from pattern, any rule we have. Um, but of course that's not possible to catch everything just by having rules. So threat hunting is, is a, a process to detect undetected breaches. So basically we create hypotheses, then we evaluate those hypotheses against our infrastructure. Um, with this, uh, allow us to detect, well, it can actually, the good thing is if we don't detect anything, but um, the, the bad is we, are, we will be able to detect things that happened and were not detected by our automation. And then, of course, incidents reported manually. 
This can be an employee, can be external companies, can be anything can report actually an incident to, uh, to our attention, our, I mean, cybersecurity team. And our um, central point will be an ITSM solution, so a service manager where we will be able to store evidences uh, and also to uh, run our workflow. So this is a high level uh, workflow. Then we will need to have um, a better workflow where we handle the incident accordingly. This is just to set uh, how it works, basically to detect incidents or to, to raise incidents. <clears throat> so what, what is incident response? Incident response is the process of uh, reacting to an incident once it uh, has been raised to our attention. So it's a, a set of procedures and processes to uh, um, answer uh, an incident, of course. So there are some standards um, that we can follow. Any company can have their own taxonomy, um, incident taxonomy. And in here I have two um, most used um, frameworks. So one is NIST. Uh, they have uh, their incident response lifecycle where they, they split it in four phases. That is the preparation of the incident where the company must uh, prepare themselves. So it's before an incident happening, actually. It's, the company needs to be prepared to respond to an incident. By all means, it's creating procedures, uh, having the right tools, having the right team. So people, processes, technology. This is preparation, so we need to be prepared. Then detection and analysis is the phase where we will actually be um, detecting, so it's where we run our analytics, our rules, to detect um, the incident. And the analysis is the, the phase after, so we will analyze what's happened. So we have something that triggered an alert, we need to look on that. So of course, this is not as simple as this. It can get more. So we will have false positives, uh, true positives, um, things that actually have no impact to the company. The analysis phase will be that one. So we will need to go deeper, understand, so is this behavior expected? Is this causing any harm to the company? Um, and then, of course, get, gathering more evidences, documenting our, our incident. So basically, this is one, well, all of them are quite important, uh, but this is where we decide, okay, should we dig deeper? Should we um, be here and, okay, close this because there's no risk for the company? Once we know, okay, this is a true positive, we need to involve uh, our response team. Uh, then we have containment, eradication, and recovery. They're all similar phases, uh, different standards. In here, containment is, so we need to ensure that the incident, it's not um, getting higher, it's not uh, uh, affecting more machines, uh, so it's not escalating. We need to contain it, we need to stop the bleed, right? So we need to make sure uh, at least what's already infected, we need to stop and contain it. Eradication, of course, is uh, making sure that it doesn't happen again. So eradicate, we need to make sure, or the company needs to make sure that the incident is completely um, sanitized and there will not be uh, opportunity to re-happen. Re um, and this, this is a cycle, of course, we can, the phases are not, it doesn't need to be all uh, followed uh, too straight. We can, of course, have different um, stages and go back, go after, go, go to the next one, go back again, and then recovery is making our systems back to the, um, to the normal state, so the production state. Since we contained it, some of the systems might have been isolated. So in the recovery stage is where we uh, recover the business to their operations. Um, and then post-activity, post also one of the most important, is where we do our report um, to make sure that we don't have the same problem again. We, we need to learn with what we have. So some, some standards call it post-activity, some others call it lessons learned. So we need to learn that if something bad happened, 
next time we will not be caught on this one. So, and you see it's a cycle. Um, sense, it depends if, if you want, if the company or organization wants to, to follow any, any of these standards. But every company is um, free to use their own um, names, naming conventions, so there's no, no need to use this one, of course. Um, but this is just um, the life cycle of an incident. <clears throat> so then, what's the problems for the business at the moment? So we know that um, cyber incidents are one of, or it's the top risk by some companies that uh, responded to the survey, of course. But what's the challenge then for incident response? Skill shortage. We know market is crazy, high demanding. There's not enough people to do um, the, all the, the roles we have opened at the moment. Technology landscape. So companies work with um, many different technologies at this moment. Security departments sometimes manage more than 20 um, applications, different security solutions um, that can go by the simple endpoint protection to cloud protection to um, all this encryption, um, web proxy, firewalls, everything. So it's, it, it's a really complex landscape the companies need to manage and events happen everywhere. So where do we focus? There's, an, there's also a challenge for the companies. The severity and volume of attacks is constantly growing. So with all this, the, um, the COVID, we had new campaigns, new phishing campaigns, so all types of, um, so more types of attacks, more severe, uh, causing more impact, impact to the company. Uh, and of course, the, without, with the other ones, so we have skill, skill shortage. We have um, a big technology landscape. And then we have also severity and volume growing, so give us a, a big problem as well. Last one, um, regulatory. Uh, companies need to comply with laws, with, um, with regulations, so PCI, DSS, GDPR, all the laws that they need to, to comply with make it harder for, uh, of course, uh, response accordingly to an incident. Then, uh, next one, maybe. Okay, this is just a small, um, in the small, uh, a bit more complex workflow about incident response. This is just an example, it's not, uh, I've just researched just to have an example so I can show it's also another problem is incident response is a manual process and disconnected. So that we have many teams in the organization that they don't speak together. So sometimes an incident is occurring and there's no communication. So it's a disconnected process because we have IT teams, we have security teams, we have legal teams, HR, um, help desk, everything. So how do we pull this every, everything together and how we make sure that we always follow the same structure to respond to an incident and we can be, of course, effective responding because in an incident, time is money and if we, ca if we get it where, when it's still in the initial phase, um, it can actually be con better contained. If it gets escalated, that will be the problem, right? So. Uh, so SOAR, what is a SOAR? Security Orchestration Automation and Response. This is a tool. Um, Gartner uh, is a, a vendor that does reviews, and they, consider, they, they, they say that it's a combination of three tools. So orchestration automation, incident response platform, and the threat intelligence platform. So all combined, we have security operation, security orchestration, response and automation. What are the benefits? So faster response times. We can respond faster to an incident because we have a solution that is doing the job for us. Optimized threat intelligence. We have a central point where we will uh, enhance our, our incidents. We will um, collect different sources to, to improve our incident response. Reduce manual operations. Most of the tasks are repetitive. Um, this will cause um, alert fatigue 
because we, are, we will be always doing the same and same tasks again, cause alert fatigue. So we, a tool like this will reduce the manual operations and uh, actually the, the team can focus on uh, more important stuff. Standardized processes, so there's no point of creating a process, then no one follows the process. So what will be the thing of having a process if no one follows? So um, the tool integration, this tool allows us to integrate a big stack of other tools, other technologies in our incident response uh, process. And of course, reporting is, is also um, one of the most important because uh, then you have all the steps performed by the team, all the, the actions taken, uh, what, what is involved, what systems are involved, what users are involved. Everything is, is here. So, um, and that's, that's the benefits. Uh, a basic table, so I, I just wanted to highlight some, some activities that we can do with the source solution um, and without a SOAR. So basically, uh, I've created just a key, there's just um, some, 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 of, some of the actions I, I find easy to compare, of course, without a SOAR and with a SOAR. This doesn't solve everything. It's, again, another technology, um, but the main objective is to improve incident response. Basically, basic uh, example, collecting ex asset information sometimes um, take more time or uh, an analyst can spend five to ten minutes just collecting from different platforms. Okay, what, what is involved? Uh, what user is involved? So in here, without a SOAR, you take five to ten minutes. With a SOAR, it's just almost immediate. It's ten seconds because you have connect connections with everything. The tool will do the job for us. It will query our domain system. It will query our email system, our uh, CMDB, that it's uh, uh, configuration uh, management database. And then will in, uh, enhance our incident response, our, our incident. Verifying IOC, sometimes there's, not sure if everyone knows, but there's many different threat intelligence platforms uh, where we can just check for reputation on IOCs. IOCs is an indicator, so an artifact that we can look up and see if, if someone already seen that uh, artifact being uh, behaving bad. So if there's any virus connecting, if there's any uh, threat actor associated. So this can take more than five minutes, actually. So depending on the platforms you want to query, um, if it's with a source solution, it will be almost instant as well. So 10 seconds, we, you have connections, basically, uh, to, to all the platforms you want to work with, and that's it. Um, then correlation with previous incidents. Sometimes um, there, there is different team members that pick the incident, and if they don't, in these days, because we're in a hybrid model, if they're not together, Maybe they don't speak, and maybe it's there, there is duplication of work because someone is already looking, and then someone is looking as well, and there's no connection in the incident because there's no relation. With this, we cannot actually make the relation, and it's almost instant. We know, okay, this has seen in another incident, connect the incidents, there's a relation, uh, please ch check them together. Enrichment, collection of events from different sources, Again, this can take uh, a large period of time, for sure. Uh, with a tool like this, because it's already integrated, it's easy and you can just select what you want to do, what you want to automate, what you want to search. Um, incident management, we, we can record all the activities. So what security orchestration, response and automation means is you need to orchestrate your incident response and then Automate, right? So what is our orchestration? Is making sure the processes are followed, the, that the team does the steps needed, and that's, that is documented. Um, so it's not just about automation, because automation will not solve everything. In here, we, will need, we, we make sure that the process is performed and, and it's followed, and that the team follows what we have set for responding to incidents. And then containment measures. It's the same. 
sometimes we need to connect to different tools, uh, make a containment, uh, take an action. With the SOAR, you have all centralized, it will connect to different platforms, and you can take that action and isolate the host, the user, whatever it is. So um, that's why in the last years, um, many companies are uh, looking into source solutions. There are, of course, different vendors in the market um, that are uh, leading these, these, these solutions. So a small diagram, uh, how it works. So basically, we have our analytics again, that it's similar to what I spoke in the, the beginning, that it's what is uh, generating our detection capability. This will feed in automatically in the SOAR, so if we have an alert, it will trigger and generate uh, an incident for our analysis. But in here, it comes the magic, is the tool for us will do automated enrichment. So triggered by the incident, it will connect to threat intelligence platforms. It will connect to our vulnerability management, to our CMDB. That's all automatically performed by the tool. So we have not even touched the tool, and we already have an incident with, um, with some information there. So it's already enriched and uh, compiled with, with, with hap what happened. And then, of course, we can manually trigger actions. We can connect. So this all works, or most of the things works through APIs, so application programming language or interface, uh, where it connects through API to, um, to these systems. And what is possible? Everything that the other technology allows. So basically, um, this technology will be able to do everything that the other technology allows to be performed by API. That's where it gets in the EDR solutions. Anti-spam, um, simple identity platforms, identity management. These days, all these platforms have uh, an API that we can query and we can perform actions. So that's how it works. Um, we have integrations, and then in the end, remediation as well. So we can actually do it automatically, or we can, of course, prepare it for a human to perform the action. So basically, OK, we have detected something. It's malicious. Please take an action. And then we can leave it for the analyst to uh, make sure that he validates it's malicious. Please block it. And then can be blocking an IP, can be blocking um, uh, a file execution, a user from logging in, that, that uh, all sort of things. Um, and this will reduce, of course, the risk uh, for the companies by improving uh, incident response. So, uh, and that was it. Uh, that's a sore. Don't know if anyone has any question uh, about what I've said. Any doubts? Yeah? No worries. Thank you. Uh, I'm. Um, I was asked. I'm, I'm old already. I'm. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Places, so I don't kind of read what is the green end and red. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So green is automatic. Okay. Uh, okay. Orange is manual. So basically, it's what can Thank be you. manual uh, automatic operations and manual operations. So that's the main difference. Okay. Yeah. And and your uh, I I missed the beginning. Sorry. And you, your company uh, develops this kind of platform, is that it? No, no, we are a, a publisher. You are scientific, publishing? Scientific company, yes, scientific publisher okay, company. thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the presentation. But this is to help companies reducing uh, business risk. Because cybersecurity incidents are uh, considered by some companies or some uh, entities uh, one of the top business risks at the moment. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, we have seen recently that some attacks have been done using social uh, engineering. How do you address that with the SOAR? So, so social engineering is a funny one, but that's mainly addressed with awareness. Training and awareness is... So you can do whatever you want to protect against phishing. The most ef uh, efficient will be training your uh, employees. Training and awareness, making phishing simulations, 
Um, it's almost impossible to protect 100% against phishing because it's really sophisticated. And if they do it um, targeted to you, they will uh, do some so social engineering. They will study you and they will make it look legit. So there's no way a system can know that that's not legit. So if basically it's training awareness and you can do, for awareness you can do phishing simulations. So basically the organi organization do its own phishing to the employees and then after they deliver a message saying, okay, you've been targeted by a simulation, you should not have clicked this link or executed this file. So that's, uh, of course, you also need a good anti-spam protection. There's things you can do in email security, like um, SPF, Kim, and Mark is making sure that the companies, when send emails each other, they verify the origin of the sender. So these, these are some of the ways to protect against phishing. But I'll, I'll still say the most e efficient for me is uh, awareness. Because, yeah, security controls can be all avoided. Hi, quick one. Yeah? So would you say that these days, with everything in the cloud, it, does that tend to a more secure environment? where before you had like physical servers and in the offices and things there, or, uh, <laughs> yeah so that's a, a, a funny one is on that one what you're doing you're transferring the risk somewhere else that's that's what you're doing so instead of being the responsibility of the organization to secure their own premise what you're doing is you're paying to to transfer the the risk so you're you're moving the risk to, uh, to your cloud provider. So they will need to take all the security measures. So in theory, you'll get better security because of course they need to provide you that security. Otherwise you need to invest your local on-premise security. So I would not say you reduce, you transfer. Yeah, good. Any other question? I think that's it, yeah, from my side. Um, I'll be outside if anyone has any other question or any, want to speak any topic. Um, my name is Angelo. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you so much, Angelo, for this great session. Please stick around for our next speakers, Pedro Moura and Rodrigo Adão da Fonseca.